Welcome to Chandwell. My name's Michael, and for the last eight weeks, I've been building this old town hall for the bottom of High Street on my N-Gage model railway layout. The building is finished, and I have added the finishing touches. The parapets, dormer windows, and chimneys are all made from paper, card, and cocktail sticks. I've added gutters, downspouts, the street name sign, and the occasional weed. These ball finials finish the overall feeling quite well, and if you can guess what they are made of before the end of this video, I'll be impressed. And just as I was recording this opening, I spotted a whopper of a mistake, which probably means the building will need surgery before it is completely finished. See if you can spot it before the end, where I will reveal how I intend to fix it. Let's get on then, and take a look at finishing detail, Scratch Built Town Hall, Part 7. The real building in Sorby Bridge makes wonderful use of these decorative balustrades. As is usual, I didn't want to spend much money, so what to do? I constructed the walls and flat stone elements in my usual way by wrapping scale scenes textures around cut card base layers. The buttresses were just stacks of card made from many squares. I eventually settled on these for the balustrades. They are turned topped cocktail sticks, and I bought four packs of ten from the miniature scene for £1.20. Chopped into bits and placed on the top of the wall, they present just the right variation in shape to fool the eye into thinking that they are something they are not. It's very hard to cut them all the same length, so I cut them all ever so slightly longer than I needed, and then I cut a notch in the top piece. Which means that the tops of the sticks go up into the notch, and it all looks like it fits nicely. Chimney stacks are again just a stack of 1mm card. I cut them out, stack them up, and use a scale model scenery right angle jig to help me arrange them. Once done, I cut a piece of texture paper scored along the lines of the chimney, and colour the edge in with a grey pencil. To get the size right, I find that making each face an extra 0.2mm wide allows the paper to fold and meet up nicely when it is tightly stuck around the base layers. A few rectangles of card are wrapped in texture and then they pile on top of each other like this. The lower angle is right as I drew it from the same drawing as the roof, so the chimney just drops on like this with a dab of PVA glue. I tried to finish it off with a bit of flashing. This is just a strip of paper roughly coloured in with a marker, and then sculpted into place in wet glue. Got mixed results here, it looks okay but I've made it a bit too dark. It should be more of a bluey grey lead colour, I'll get it right next time. The brick chimney stacks were made in the same way. Stack, wrap, rectangles, wrap, stack, ta-da, PVA, plonk into place, way down. I use the simplest technique for my gutters. Colour the edge of a bit of card with a black marker, chop a bit off, and glue it against the wall. Low fidelity, yes, but it gives a convincing enough look as long as you don't look too closely. Dormers are simple, they're just a couple of triangles, a window and a rectangular roof. I start with the windows using my usual sticky label method. I stick the printed parts onto two further sheets of photo paper, leaving me with components three sheets thick. The white frames are first. I cut the hole before the frame so that I don't accidentally tear the frame. Once cut it just sticks over the label and acetate, leaving enough of an overhang for the side walls. Keeping a careful note of which way is the front, I just glue the three layers of paper side triangles onto the acetate, and then drop the frame and sides onto the roof. A folded bit of paper with crayon scribbles makes a convincing enough blind. Almost there, I just need to remove the white edge with a grey watercolour pencil, and then drop it onto the roof with a blob of glue. I use the same technique as the gutters for the downspouts. Use a ruler to draw a straight line of PVA and then drop a sliver of black coloured card onto the glue. So I wanted eight finials on top of my parapet. On the Royal Scot I used little balls of milliput, so I did the same here. It soon became apparent that the balls were too big, and the bases were too fat, and none of them were actually spherical, and they were all different sizes. They had to go. So back to the expensive cocktail sticks. I kept the unused bits anyway, they make excellent chimney pots. I cut the tiniest slices I could, between half and one millimetre thick, 
They were all slightly different, but I did way more than I needed so that I could pick out the most consistent ones. These dropped into little blobs of PVA and will make excellent supports for my balls. But what about those balls? I had no push pins. The balls off bath chains are too small. I couldn't find any old costume jewellery. What on earth is spherical, with a diameter of about 3mm and easy to get my hands on in my house? I know. I walked into the kitchen and opened the baking cupboard. Nestled at the back, a tube of toothbreakers. These little silver balls were a favourite of mine as a child, as cake decorations. They look perfect. They are basically wheat and sugar, but they're as hard as nails. I did wonder about whether they would last, but this tub is already approaching nine years after its best before date, so I don't think I've that much to worry about. I used Uhu rather than PVA, and just placed the little sugar balls onto the cocktail sticks. Once set, I painted them with stone coloured primer, and then highlighted them until they blended in with the stonework of the building. I used bits of cocktail sticks for the chimney pots, and they are as wonky as the other ones on my layout. I painted them. And the secret is to put a dab of black on the top. This makes them look hollow, as long as you don't look too closely. So a bit of glue on the baseboard, and at last the building is part of Chandwell. A few days later and I started to make this video, and then I noticed it. Look at this, I've put the chimney stack right above a window. There should be a fireplace here, not a window with a view of the back of Iron Bridge Works. What's keeping the chimney from falling down? Anyway, the solution is easy, there will be a small building butting up against this one. Maybe a little extension or something. I really love this building. I think it's maybe too elaborate to be my absolute favourite, but I am really pleased with how it turned out. Back to planning now, what will come next? If you would like to see progress a bit sooner, then please do consider joining my channel as a member. Members get photo updates and a weekly behind the scenes video where I ramble on about what I am trying to achieve. But regardless of that, please come back next week and see what I decide about what's next. Till then then, thank you for watching, take care and I'll see you next time.